September 15th, 2023, and I've had a productive and quite interesting day. Um, productive in the way that I applied for three different positions at the school district. I'm actually moving forward with changing positions, changing jobs, um, going back to teaching, but not actually going back as a teacher, maybe going back as a special uh, a special ed teach or or um, some kind of assistant but um, there are a few positions but I can't I can't apply for them because it's the same principle I'm looking for something that's not nine to five or eight to five um, Monday to Friday eight to five I'm looking for something that's more a little more flexible so I'm looking at positions that have six and a half hours, seven hours to allow me to oops, to allow me to spend a little more time with my son or have some time to make appointments for him and me and et cetera, et cetera. What am I doing? I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, so and the main reason that I'm doing this because yeah, I'm struggling with the schedules and everything. But the main reason that I'm motivated to get out of there is now is because the the management person is really toxic and you know conversations with my therapist and everything I feel pretty confident to call her a malignant narcissist and so it's been mentally abusive it's been emotionally abusive and she bullies and targets people and she really has it out for me because I stood up for I stood up to that bully and took away some of her power for a brief moment so she's come back with a vengeance kind of looking for anything that she can kind of grasp at to to her ultimate goal is to even if it's in a slow pace get me fired so um, it's pretty pathetic but that's that's my reality in this place and no one's saying anything like I I filed a formal complaint but being in a small town with everybody who everybody knows everybody um, you know people look the other way when they know you you know people look the other way when things happen so as much as they tell you oh make sure that you report those things nothing got done there's been no um, no respite for the staff in my department that she runs um, the only respite we had was that she went on maternity leave and left for a while and we actually thrived and it was very clear that no one needs her there um, the whole department runs just as smoothly so whatever um, I'm getting out of there and I'm so looking forward to that um, I already took all my decorations from my office space, took them out of there so I can just up and leave when I'm ready. So, um, so that's that. I'm looking forward to this new change and hopefully it is exactly what I need in order to um, just better the life of my son and I have the time to do the things that my son requires. Um, the assistance that my son needs and um, and yeah sure I might make a little bit less money but you know what you can't buy peace of mind you really can't so we're moving on and ultimately this place was never my forever place it's uh, a place that I didn't expect to be here this long and I certainly didn't expect to end here with a child because I got to this place when I moved here, I was to move with a child, and it was never my intention to become a mom, but, uh, you know, life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. <laughs> so, um, the question now is where to move, and I've always said that, you know, when I find my right partner, you know, the, the when I find my husband material, then I'll know where I'm going to move, because I'm going to move with him, so. That's still kind of a goal, um, so we'll see. So in that, speaking of that, I met somebody and 
I shake my head because I attract the craziest men. I attract men that are kind of broken, I say, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean men that need respite themselves, I think. Sometimes they feel like they're put together, but they really aren't. And when they come together with me, and there are certain things that are just minimal, bare essential requirements, and they're not meeting those bare essential requirements, there's issues, you know, and there's enlightenment, and there's growth, and there's conversation, and I don't know about growth, but there's enlightenment, and, um, and uh, things don't end up working well. So this last time that I lost my uh, former fiance, I went to therapy for, with two different therapists, and I really feel like the the hurt that that relationship created for me helped me grow in a way that I've never felt. I've never seen myself. I've never. I finally became. I feel like a full grown woman, and um, I'm in my goddess space, and and I see I see now the behaviors that I find silly now that I would have fallen for or the the hopeless romantic antics or the excitement of jumping at an opportunity to experience something with someone and you know what I'm not knocking it because there is something really beautiful and raw about that but you have to be prepared for the crash and that is something that I naively never prepared for I just dove in head first and never expected to to crash land I just expected to float in clouds or water or something and uh, it's not quite like that if if you're gonna dive in head first and enjoy that magical whiny crazy ride with somebody who you kind of vibe with like that be prepared to to crash because it's 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 unstable and not there was no stability from the beginning there's not going to be any stability throughout and that has been proven time and time again so I sit there I sit back and I have a, a dating site available open and um, and from time to time I'll tap into it you know and I see like a whole bunch of intros and um, and then you know I, I few of them I'm like okay sure why not let's talk to this person and sometimes I develop a little bit more than just a high and high kind of thing or just the the standard bull I just you know swipe and go no thanks um, and from time to time someone catches my attention but I know better I know better because the guys that catch my attention um, tend to always have some kind of mental health issues some kind of instability emotional instability so I mean I'm still like my therapist said it's gonna take time for me to stop attracting those kind of men it's gonna take time for me to stop uh, being interested or lure or or, or uh, enjoying that so I, I feel like I'm getting there because say like uh, I met somebody and uh, I've been talking to a few people one of them is an archaeologist and I have to say he's pretty leveled out I and mean, I can tell that he's talking to a whole bunch of other people and that's fine I have no feelings for anybody I've like caught absolutely zero feelings um, I think Mr. Teacher was the, probably the only one that I had a little bit of like a crush, but it really even didn't get there. Just He just reminded me of my ex because he was the next one after my ex. And so that feeling uh, kind of lingered. I kind of maybe applied a little bit of my ex into Mr. Teacher because they both were bipolar. My ex fiance was bipolar one and this one was bipolar two so I don't know there was something there that made me feel like I had him my my ex fiance again even though they're completely different um, in appearance and and just ev and everything but um, I don't know it was a moment of uh, feeling a little something and then it completely went away and I 
been on a few dates with other people and I, to me it's nothing to them it's like oh they've never met somebody like me I hear this all the time never met somebody like me and uh, I'm amazing and so blah this and blah that and um, okay uh, yeah I understand that you've never met somebody like me I, I, I know that um, and what they are seeing in me is the fact that I'm for the most part when I go on like the first few dates I'm kind of a blank canvas um, I do share a little bit here and there just out of interest give interest and and go with the flow kind of thing but for the most part I'm listening I'm I'm a really good listener and men sometimes have a lot to say and I don't think a lot of women might give them that opportunity I think maybe women I don't know I can't speak for other women but maybe it sounds like some women like to be catered to and so men feel like they're on have to be on and catered to in order to get to get some kind of reward from that relationship whereas when I go on a date with a guy you know, I'm just like you know I'll goof around and say a few things to kind of put him at ease and know that you know I'm chummy <laughs> and we can just go hang out and do something fun and take it from there so uh, my dates are always pretty damn successful and the guy always wants to see me again so I met a few days ago another guy and uh, I honestly didn't think he was that interested um, I could tell that he was always on the site when I every time I logged in he was there so I was like okay this guy's talking to like a million women um, he's not even going to notice that I'm going to dip out, right? And so I did. And 24 hours later, <laughs> yesterday, he sends me a message in the morning to say, Hey, I don't know if this is appropriate over in uh, Marco Polo, the video chat thing. He's like, I don't know if this is appropriate, but I just wanted to know where you are. Um, you kind of disappeared on me and I haven't seen you. So, you know, if you're not interested anymore, then, you know, just let me know. But... Um, I'm kind of hoping that you are. And I thought to myself, what? What he noticed? One, he noticed I was gone too. He's talking about uh, if I'm interested. I didn't think he was interested. Or or even noticed that I dipped out. But I guess he did. And um, so I reached out and I told him, uh, yeah, I, I'm interested. And told him my perspective on it. Um, and we got to talking. And so that was yesterday. We got to talking in the afternoon um, over the phone. He gave me a call. We did a little bit of Marco Polo, but then he called me on the phone. And lo and behold, we talked, mostly him, <laughs> for over three hours. I cannot remember, recall the last, no, I guess I can. It was December before my ex-fiance moved in with us. December of last year. Um, the last time that I spent any time lengthy hours on the phone with anybody um, and so we spent three three and a half hours on the phone yesterday and we talked the conversation was pretty great considering it was our first time in a really interacting and really like hey hi I'm Kayla and you're Dylan actually we had already said that like a day before but still you know the first time we actually were on the phone talking and we talked about everything he was really candid he was really open he was really transparent um, he seems to be that kind of guy that's just really transparent um, he told me actually that he was talking to um, women 150 women to be specific he wasn't talking to 150 but he did reach out to 150 and he said and from those just a handful replied to him um and he has been narrowing it down and so he had he said he had a handful of women like four that he was talking to as of, as of yesterday night um and so his whole mentality is that he's trying to find the one. He's trying to find his one, his wife. He wants to give 
that relationship 50 years and and you know he's got a star he's 35 he's now entering that that place in his life where he wants to be uh, a husband where he wants to be a father figure um, but he's obviously he's intimidated because he's never been and he's been through things that have hurt him okay yeah we've had we have a nice conversation when it comes to that very standard conversation about ex relationships and where we are at now um, and then uh, but then we we got to talking more about art because he's a writer and a poet and he's eloquent in the way that he expresses himself he is a smart guy he is intelligent and I am a sapiosexual demisexual which happens to be what he is as well so he's attracted to that smart women but come on that's not the only thing he's attracted to <laughs> but anyway um he's uh so it was a really enlightening conversation we talked about poetry we talked about art his mom is an artist she's a painter and she's uh, she actually made that her profession and um i got to see some of her work today he sent me uh, links to some her website and, uh, and then I got to send him um, my, some of my photography, some of my paintings. Uh, haven't sent him some of my writings yet. Um, and um, well, he really, he was really impressed and he's, he likes me. And so we got talking about the universe and we got talking about energy. And we got talking about, uh, he doesn't seem to me like the guy that's quite there in the he's more of a left brain kind of guy more analytical so the spirituality side of things I think I'm testing my my uh, testing rattling that cage a little bit to see how much um, he's in tune with that and so far when I say energy and such he knows what we're talking about it was it was so the conversation we're doing is just it just flowed it flowed in a way that it was so comfortable it was so comfortable it almost felt like I didn't feel like I knew him but it felt like I was just chit chatting you know with my friend didn't feel like oh snap this is the first time we've ever been on the phone together so we talked about everything we talked about family what I really liked about him that stood out from everybody else and this is how I know he has keen emotional intelligence is that he had some really deep and personal questions to to ask to about for me for me and that's not something that I'm, I'm used to from guys who like to talk a lot um, they usually don't stop to ask you a question and you know to get to know you and I did appreciate that about him he would give me that turn to say something participate in that conversation and get to know me so I liked it and the questions were deep the questions were well thought out and questions were questions that had uh, depth to the answer as well so I I like that that caught my attention so this guy's 35 and um, and he's like he said he had to take a doubt, triple look <laughs> at my pictures and my videos because he's like how are you older than me he's like you look younger than me <laughs> I said I get that a lot <laughs> um, I'm not from this planet what can I say <laughs> so um yeah, so we we had a pretty great first phone date. Um, it got interesting because we hit the topic of sex, and I knew that we were going to hit this topic because he had he he asked me if we could talk in the evening, and he gave me a list of the topics that he wanted to cover, and a lot of them had to do with. Uh, kind of relationships where he saw himself where he's where you know where I am and things how we feel about each other um, kind of like a mental like he had like a mental checklist of things to see if I oh my god Kai you scared me so we shared and um, just things back and forth he told me about the cabin in Montana that his family has and he was over there not too long ago and then today he showed me a video of it and it's like, oh my God, that is so beautiful. It's literally like a cabin on this big, flat, old piece of land. And if you just look 
up ahead it's like the tall tall mountains in the dis not not too far in the distance they're like right there and i'm like are you kidding me this is your view and there's like nothing else i'm like that is paradise i'm like it's so beautiful i want to cry and he's like i did um and so that's he's, he says he's learning how to repair things because his goal is to um spend time there with his you know wife and his children and so i'm like oh oh like that sounds like really beautiful really awesome i want to be the wife and children <laughs> but 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 i like him as a friend i think he's handsome um but he's a little cray cray <laughs> And this is what I mean about me attracting men that are unstable. <laughs> he has some kinks. I am not going to dive into it. I'm not going to discuss the kinks. But let's just say that he's too much for me. <laughs> and for me to say that, anyone that knows me knows I'm pretty down. <laughs> to try things but yesterday when we were on the on the topic of sex and see how compatible we were there and stuff we seemed pretty damn compatible up to the point where he went from most people to these people <laughs> and I'm over here playing it cool because that's just who I am and I've never actually been around or so if it's been a scenario discussed with other people um, and but never have I actually known somebody with this these fetishes these kinks and so he's into like um, S&M and um, and such and that's that's fine that's I feel like that's pretty standard these days he gave me a whole bunch of terminology and I'm like okay I'm naive when it comes to this sexual terminology, I said, and then we went down the list of some of them, and I said, but this doesn't mean I haven't actually done this, because I realized there's like most of that stuff has a name, and I had no idea, and I've been there, done that, <laughs> and so, you know, we discussed some of the things that we've experienced, and everything was fine, and so he said, well, I haven't really given you the the kinks where I lose people this is where I lose people and I was like oh snap what how do you lose people after this he's pretty good looking he's got a great voice he's smart and sexy he's just, he's funny AF and I'm thinking you know he's got a good job he's he's um um he owns his own business in uh oh speaking of Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so I was, I was kind of prepared, but I wasn't at the same time with what he came at me with. And I was like, oh my God, he's one of the O's. And I'm not entirely sure what the fascination is, why, <laughs> and how. So, he did divulge into that topic a little bit because he let me know that this is something that he absolutely needs. He knows he absolutely wants um, in his relationship. And he compared it to something that I very much enjoy. And because he compared it to that, something that was relatable to, to me, sexually, I kind of was able to understand where he was coming from with it. 
but I was like, no, <laughs> no freaking way. There's, oh my gosh. So I'm just like, I'm listening. I'm giving him his, his space to feel safe. But I'm thinking to myself, just like, fuck, are you kidding me right now? This guy. So he told me um, that, um, that, uh, well, he seems to date women of, of, of color, ethnic women. Uh, he dates Latinas. He dates African American. He dates African women. He just, he dates women of color because white women are too vanilla for this vanilla guy. <laughs> well, this is vanilla guy with razor blades in the ice cream. <laughs> Fuck. I'm thinking to myself, why? Because if he wasn't, if he wasn't into these kinks, he would already be taken. Because, um, like I said, he's got a good job. He's cute. He's funny. He's smart. Um, he's just, he's kind of, kind of perfect. You know, if you like white guys that are blonde and blue eyed, <laughs> I suppose. Um, he's just, but then there's that. Uh, that <laughs> and I think yeah for sure for sure I want to say 90 at least percent of the women will go fuck no out I just I just don't know so I didn't I didn't bolt uh, I didn't it's nothing illegal it's nothing harmful I don't know <laughs> I don't even plan to do research on it when I usually would do research on, on a subject that I'm not familiar with or it's not my forte. But this one, I don't <laughs> know anything about it. I'm not going to. You can use your imagination and imagine what it is that could possibly just cringe the F out of me <laughs> and most women. But, um, yeah, so I came across a guy into that, and I still want to pick his brain. I, I didn't cut the relationship or the getting to know him then and there, because I'm still curious. I still want to pick his brain about that subject a little more. I've never had someone who was into these things present to ask, why? <laughs> Based on the information that I heard yesterday, I kind of can understand to a degree, but anyway, anyway, <laughs> I, was, I was doing this, I was giggling to myself later on, and then today again, it's like this, this, this is my, this is my love life right here, this, this is, this is how lucky I am, <laughs> but this is what I get. The universe is like, oh yeah, let's give you a guy who's like totally into you. He he's the kind of appearance, the physical appearance that you like. He's demisexual. He's sapiosexual. He's a very smart guy. He's, you know, he's moderately successful on the way to possibly being more successful. He's he's got a great like a, a family dynamics and and he has the ability to take you to uh, to his cabin in Montana and he wants to take you this way and he wants to come and see you and he's he got he's got butterflies you guys obviously had that sexual chemistry of some sort happening because we did start feeling I got started getting goosebumps with him and I started and that only happens with very select people just an energy that in exchange being sapiosexual and being attracted to intelligence there's something about a, a smart guy talking about the universe for me that just does wonders. Poetry, words, uh, he's he's wordy and, and articulate and it does wonders for me. It really does. So I was getting like little chills and stuff, right? I just, I like, I like a certain marching to the beat of his own drum and I'm used to guys with ADHD or ADD. So fast conversations that kind of jump from this place in this way and come back and culminate into the conversation we were originally having I'm absolutely used to that so I was vibing with him until that <laughs> and so um let me cut this real quick there we go so 
I just, I want to keep him around because I want to ask some questions. I, I, he's, he said he's an open book, so I can ask anything I want. So, um, he was, he said he teared up last night when I didn't shun him for his kinks. And it, it made me feel a little sad for him because I was being a little judgy internally. Um, but nothing, I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't put off by it, but I was, but I was, but on the outside, I was giving him that space to just feel safe to share that because that's obviously something he's into and who am I to knock it, you know? Uh, <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of decided like, mm, no friends on this guy and and I'm not gonna say anything else because then I'm just being too obvious with it so and I'm just trying to protect him there's no reason to go into details of anybody else like that so needless to say it was a very unique experience um, we ended up really connecting on a like an energy level <clears throat> excuse me we ended up really connecting on an energy level that I haven't experienced since my former fiance and that was nice and I'm like no why why am I connecting with him on this level when I know that I'm not gonna date him there is no way that I'm gonna date this guy he requires a certain amount of something and he needs it <laughs> and I'm not about to do any of that no <laughs> so god so I'm like, why? Why am I feeling this other connection? He's so on on paper. He's so perfect in every other way for me. However, he is love bombing me. He is love bombing the shit out of me. And I'm I I don't go for that anymore. I don't go for toxic men who love bomb. This is a, not a stable thing at all. At all. <laughs> and so uh, we ended our conversation and I was like, wow, three and a half hours, that, that says something. I never felt uncomfortable. I never felt like I had to go. I never felt it rushed in any kind of way. He was, he was so present the whole time. He like really enjoyed our, our company. This morning when I woke up, he was, I had a good morning already on my phone and, uh, he was so lit and so gun ho today he's so animated he he's, he kept telling me i'm all or nothing um you know last night we were like we don't want to rush into anything but we want to take our time want to do things differently because um you know we've both been hurt and we've both made the mistakes of diving into a relationship and it not panning out right so we don't want to do anything to jeopardize something that might be quality and when I said that when I say that when I agree to that I mean as like a friend because there's no way I could date a guy that requires me to be a certain kind of way in the bedroom I can't I can't it's just not my thing so he obviously needs a woman that is going to be comfortable with that and he has actually successfully dated women so I'm assuming, <clears throat> I'm only assuming that the women he's dated have been okay with performing these things for him and, or with him, or, I'm not one of them, <laughs> I'm not one of them, so anyway, <laughs> so this morning and today, he was just like all lit and he just kept sending me messages to tell me, hey, I've told so and so that only we're only going to be friends and i have a date with two more one today one tomorrow to let them know that you know i'm only looking for friendship and um and uh and he's like if we get exclusive then that's it for them so he's very transparent he spent a few hours with this last one he had a date tonight a phone date or something i don't know um, and 
he just sent me a text message to say he's going to go to sleep early tonight. Bye. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it went really well with that person. And it seems like that person is in this town too. What are the odds of that? So um, it might have gotten well. And he might have gotten somebody else to go, oh, okay, yeah, I'll follow along with your kinks. <laughs> Good. Wish him well. Because I definitely, um, I was definitely listening to him say, okay, I told this person no, I'm stopping this, I'm doing that, and when we do this and we do that, and, and uh, you know, the relationship and your son, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I got on Marco Polo, and I said, hey, I appreciate your candor, I appreciate you telling me how it is in your world and what you what your expectations are. Um, I'm gonna reciprocate in the same way. I appreciate your straightforwardness. It works really well for me. Um, with my neurodivergency, it's I said I I I work this way. It's it's great. So um, let let me let me express to you how I'm feeling about certain things. And I didn't touch the subject of his kinks. I actually just asked him at one point, like I would like to know more about these. I have some questions. Um, but that's more my personal curiosity. <laughs> really, it's not because I want to learn how. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, why? Why, universe? Why do this to me? I, I've been through enough. I just want to find my husband. I want to find a sweet, loving, caring man. I don't care how much money he has. I don't care uh, if he's humble. I just want... I just want a sweet, loving, caring man to be by my side, um, to help me with groceries, to help me with repairs, to help me with my son, to raise my son with me. And just, you know, go out for walks in the forest, go hang out at the beach, go play disc golf. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Let's just do family things. Let's just do activities together. Let's ride bikes. Let's, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just be a simple happy family growing our own vegetables and you know talking about fucking the system <laughs> building our own little tiny home somewhere in our own land, piece of land how about that how can I can I find a guy that's that and just exclusively wants me you know and wants to be a father figure and be an awesome just awesome human being with no bullshit, with no egos, with just, just chill with me. You know what me and my former fiance used to do? We used to get high at the end of the day, once we put my child to bed, we used to get high at the end of the day and then watch our favorite shows, cuddle together. That was the best, that was the best. And I remember sitting there with him thinking, why didn't I do this more often with my other partners? Like I <laughs> This is absolutely the best. And we would make love and we would cuddle and we would hold each other and we'd laugh together and we'd snack together. Um, this is how we put some weight on. <laughs> and we talked about our shows and we fell asleep on the couch and sometime in the middle of the night we'd go to bed together. And then we'd just cuddle together. And that was my nighttime routine and I fucking loved it. I haven't smoked weed since my former fiance left that's how long it's been I just I don't know I got kind of depressed and just didn't want to so um I think that's more of a thing that I like to do with my partner versus alone um it wasn't quite the case before him because I was smoking weed before my partner uh before I met him but I just I don't know after him I stopped doing a lot of things that just I, I lost him and then I lost this part of my joy that that I had in that relationship and how happy I was so I'm, I'm starting to recover some of me I definitely am and it's been a few few months now where I've, I've started doing things that I had stopped doing altogether just kind of this was just existing until recently so maybe that's something I pick up again but but anyway you know going back to the subject it was fabulous. That's all I want. Even if we don't smoke weed. Maybe he doesn't smoke weed. That's fine. I'm not really a weed smoker. I'm just chill. We would 
smoke weed and drink wine. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's the best. I just want something simple. Why? Why not deliver that man? Why deliver men like this one who's just well I could right now I could cut it and show a picture of him, but I'm not going to for privacy purposes. But why not just send me a nice guy? Why send me a guy with these kind of things? It's me. It's what I'm attracting. I'm still working on it. I'm trying to manifest something different, but at the same time I've been in a kind of, of a dark place. I just lost a sister. I lost my fiance all in the same year. I'm just I'm kind of in a dark space and I'm feeling numb in my feelings. Um, I'm dealing with a really, like I said, malignant kind of boss and I've been so numb in my feelings I actually looked at her and gave her shit. <laughs> I gave her attitude back when I've never have. It's, she makes me nervous and uncomfortable and this time around I feel like, fuck you bitch. I'm not going to sit here and take your abuse and your lies and your manipulation so I need to change my energy I need to meditate and I'm not meditating and I'm quite calm but but I I haven't fallen for anybody and especially not the men that are coming into my life with these these things and it's it's pretty though I like what's happened like that lion right there was from Mr. Teacher um, the expensive PJs were from Mr. Big. I never mentioned Mr. Big again because I, I, I'll say it now. Mr. Big was really flashy. Mr. Uh, go big or go home. Um, and I feel like he uses his money to get what he wants from women. And women tend to reciprocate and give him what he wants because, I mean, he takes you on plane rides, he takes you to Disneyland and Epcot, he takes you to theme parks and he takes you to expensive hotels where you see the Disney castle or you eat with princesses, like he would treat you like royalty and then I think he just kind of gets what he wants and maybe moves on to the next conquest, so I saw that from the beginning um, and I resisted and I resisted and he bought me PJs and I resisted and he got him brought him to me and I resisted and, and He tried to touch me and I resisted He wanted to sleep with me and I resisted and I resisted a lot. I put a lot of no, 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 no when he left you know, um, I I just we agreed to see each other again and uh, I resisted <laughs> and he went and he travels a lot he, you know and I don't oh that's another thing he's constantly traveling he went from New Zealand to Australia and then came over to see me um, but before that he was in North Carolina he got home he went to North Carolina came over to see me and then he went back and he was going to Japan the last I saw him the last I knew of him and so I that's not a family man and and sure I might be set for life with a guy like that but he's also already he was trying to work me into the, his system to be okay to possibly be an open relationship like he knew that I wanted to be monogamous but he was kind of testing the his my boundaries with like kinks because he was another guy into kinks not as severe as <laughs> this one but he was also kind of Im implying that, you know, there might be, like, maybe we could be okay with, you know, being open to experiences and maybe other people. And I was like, mm, this guy is going to end up, like, I like the idea, but it has to come from a place of, I am with my partner, and I'm very secure with this person, and it's always been us, and now we want to introduce something sexy and different into our relationship but we already have the dynamic you know of us together being a unit deciding this together with him it would have been a I'm just going along for the ride because he is my partner and he makes the calls and he's manipulating the situation for those things to happen with me but while still having me so no I was like I told him you know what I'm I kind of like you for you, and I kind of, I think I might have said kind of, I kind of like you for you, I, I, not for what you can offer me, or um, what you can give me, 
I said, I, I take care of myself. And, and right now I just feel like maybe you're not in a place where you can be, uh, where you would settle down. I don't see that. I think you're in a place where you're exploring your options and that's fine. I said, but that's not the place. We're not at the same place. I said, um, maybe down the line, I said, when you might get to a point where you want to settle down, you want to find your, your, you know, your mate, maybe that'll be a time where, you know, we can reconnect. Um, but at to, up to this point, we're just going to stay friends and leave it at that. And so he didn't like my answer and we stopped talking. And he told me that if I ever wanted to be his friend, I could just reach out to him. And instead of doing that, I removed him from my wall. Um, because I know he was looking at my pages and what's the point of having somebody there if they're not actually going to, you know, honor and be a friend. And so I removed him and never heard from him again. Um, so much for him feeling something different with me. The only thing he was feeling was his pants and the fact that he's the kind of guy who likes a challenge. He liked that, you know, I don't know, maybe I was one of the first people in a while to say, I don't care how much money you have, you're not going to buy me with it. So, next. So Mr. Big is gone. <laughs> and then this guy, he doesn't even have a name, but this guy, I had to... Put the reins on him today I had to it's like whoa 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 and actually when I told him that hey do you realize that yesterday we talked about taking it slow and that we didn't want to make the same mistakes as before and you know want to really get to know you I said I don't want to sleep with you when I see you that's not what I want to do when I meet somebody I want it to be sweet I wanted to, I want to have that first hold hand hand holding <laughs> just like that <laughs> Hand holding. I wanna, I wanna have those moments where we accidentally end up looking each other in the eyes and connect. And I wanna have a first kiss. I, I want those things. Um, I don't wanna just find a hotel. And I don't. So, um, so I said, so that's not gonna happen. Uh, as much as this chemistry is here, I don't know if we have the compatibility. And I feel like there's two different things, chemistry and compatibility. And compatibility is, I think, the one to really look into because chemistry you can have with a lot of people. You can just buy it, you know, and you feel it and it's exciting and it's new. And in particular, when it's new, it's easy to just like feel that attraction. But the compatibility, are you really compatible with that person? You and the person have the same kind of morals. Do you have the same kind of integrity? Do you have the same kind of goals? Or you, do you view the world in a similar way? Or is it at least compatible in a way where you can, you know, learn from each other but, and still coexist? So I don't know what I have in common with this guy. It definitely isn't kinks. <laughs> and how would I fit into that, into that dynamic? I don't want to kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> After what I know. Oh no, God, <laughs> shut up now. <laughs> and so I put I put a stop to it. I said it's it's a no go. I, I'm I'm not I'm not okay with you telling other women that if I'm looking at this from a relationship standpoint, from a we're going into something a little more serious, first of all we just met. Two second, we just started talking yesterday. So it's, that's not happening. So, but if we were, I don't know how I feel about you telling other women that they're your second choice, basically. And if it doesn't work out with me, you're just going to like pop and then jump to that. So I'm not cool with that. He did clarify that a little bit better afterwards. But, and then I said, and I said, since we just met, I, I'm going to tell you right now to protect you and protect my heart. I'm going to just stop it right here and start taking it slow with you. I want to get to know you as a friend. I want to get to know you as a person. Um, if anything in the future develops from that, then, you know, we can discuss it then. But I am looking, I'm not here to, to mess around. I'm, I am looking for my husband. When I find my husband, he's going to be a man that I, that I adore. He's going to be a man that I respect. He's going to be a man that I admire. 
he's going to be a man that I'm going to take his last name proudly, you know, and, and we're going to build a life together. And that's the man that I'm going to be with and I'm going to be loyal to and I'm going to stay with and I'm going to be able to build with. So I need to be very careful whom I allow to place a ring on my finger, whom I allow to into my space, into my, my body, into my child's heart. Because mm -mm, this wasn't a mistake. I love this guy. I, I will always think of it fondly, that, that part of my life, um, with affection. I will think about him with affection. But I had I used discernment, I would not have ended up in the situations that I was because I saw the red flags from the beginning and I didn't bother to use discernment and slow the, slow the thing down to really see who was before me and maybe possibly say, hey, I love you, but you need to get yourself on medication, you need to get yourself a therapist, you need to get yourself a psychiatrist and, and work through things. I'll be here to hold your hand, but you need to work through these things before you and I can actually come together and be this, this, this relationship that would definitely work because not only did we have chemistry, but we had the compatibility as well. And we had the, okay, yeah, there are things that you are that I'm not and things that I am that you're not, but there was so much possibility there for growth and compliment, complimenting each other that was a relationship that I felt was very soul because we complemented each other and and we worked well but damn mental health bipolar one rapid cycling unmedicated there's no way and um, it's like asking a, a kindergartner to sit still for an hour and read some science book or do some math there's no way you just can't, you can't ask a person that's struggling with their mental health in such a severe way to have a healthy, stable relationship. I just wasn't aware. I just wasn't aware. I didn't have the knowledge that I have now. Sorry, that was my chair. <laughs> I didn't have the knowledge that I have now to, to make my educated choices, make my educated moves, and... Um, with Mr. Teacher, seeing how he was bipolar too, I was so much more aware, and I actually started kind of treating him like I used to treat Joshua um, when, that's my former fiance, when, um, when I would try to like nurture him, um, I started kind of doing that with Mr. Teacher, and he liked it, he really did. Um, but I, I noticed I started doing it because I was more in tune with the disease the mental health disease and so when I started seeing like little patterns with Mr. Teacher who was medicated but and had a psychiatrist but didn't have a therapist and he was still dealing with some OCD controlling issues um, when I started noticing those things because I did become more aware after all the education that I put myself through to understand my former partner um, I was there I was there to nurture that and I was happy to do so because it fulfilled that hole that my partner left where I was taking care of him on an emotional level I was taking care of him on a physical level um, and then it, he wasn't there and I missed that doing that for my partner I was happy to do it and um, and so Mr. Teacher kind of came out of nowhere and with the same diagnosis practically practically not quite but practically um, and so he kind of gave me somebody to, to nurture that way and with more awareness. So that was really cool for a minute there until, until he wasn't my partner. He didn't fulfill me like my partner did. And I just, if you're not giving me that je ne sais quoi, I don't know what the hell's the point. <sighs> and so those are my little updates I personally I'm so proud of myself I'm so proud of my personal growth as, as a human being but also as a woman 
I need to do more spirituality and I need to do more physical health because I I did eat my feelings uh, I did stop intermittent fasting and I stopped doing things that were really good for myself for a minute there I got depressed um, I started trying way Gobi shots and they they played with my mental health got me to have a really depressive episode and so I got off of them and my doctor totally agreed to just get off of them so I'm not on them anymore they didn't really help me anyway uh, but I only did two like the really mild ones um, I'm feeling so much better but then I got hit with my soul sister dying passing away of mysterious mysterious reasons and they've decided not to figure out what happened and so I'll never know and I'll never see her again and I always thought I had more time with her we needed to fix our our relationship but she was a soul sister and we have matching tattoos and I just thought I'd have more time to repair things and be close again and her and her family were the closest thing to a real family that I've ever had so I'm just I'm devastated and I don't have any feelings I have empathy but I have mostly logic I don't have any feelings for anybody the men in my life that I used to love I'm I cringe when I see them in pictures. I had to pull out a whole bunch of pictures of my soul sister, her and I, in different throughout the years, and all the things we went through, and I forgot so much about her. I would forgotten so much about those moments in pictures, on the videos and stuff, and unfortunately in those pictures, I mean, not unfortunately, it was beautiful at the time, and I loved it so much at the time, but my twin flame is in a lot of those, and I look at him now and his behavior. For one, he's super Canadian. Wow, that accent. <laughs> I didn't even hear it at the time. Two, he is super ADHD. It's ridiculous. Three, he's super obnoxious. And I just like, I'm like, I was dating this kid? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I really, I just like, what the fuck? You know, he gets in the way of the camera or I'm just like pointing at it because I was like in love with him like a puppy dog. And I'm like, now it's cringy. Like, uh, like, why did I, why was I so in love with this dude? And I'm like, he's annoying. <laughs> and I'm like, he gets in front of the camera. I'm like, get the fuck out of the way. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to see what's happening behind. Or, you know, I see my soul sister back there with her partner or something. I don't know. Too much. It's too much of him. And I remember my brother one time years ago saying something about he liked a video that I made, but it was, uh, the picture, the the parts where my twin flame was, was too much jelly and a peanut butter sandwich or something like that, he said. And I was like, what do you mean by that at the time? But now I see what he means. It's like, it's too much of it. Too much of it. Get, get out of the way. Get that, get that, get that kid out of the way. <laughs> like, he's not, he's a disappointment to me to this day. He really is. Um, talk about narcissists. Talk about <clears throat> unhealed. Talk about stagnant talk about angry talk about misplaced feelings <laughs> that guy has so much apologizing to do and do you think he ever thought about that no um on the contrary he still walks around like i owe him something i owe him nothing and um and good riddance to toxic people so i'm indifferent when it comes to him but I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself for the woman that I've finally become, where this is the woman I think I always was. I was just never taught to be this. And for a very long time, from a very young age, I was, my spirit was broken. My confidence was shattered. My, my existence didn't matter. So I walked around feeling that way, that I had to be all these things to be loved and, and receive receive love and be worthy and it's not like that. 
to finally see myself as beautiful and imperfect. I finally see why I attract so many men. I finally see why um, I, I attract so many people in general. Um, and I finally see why I am a spark in this world. And I love my heart. I love the person that I am inside. Because no matter what someone maliciously says about me, I know who I am and it doesn't change anything. That's none of my concern because I know who I am inside. I know the confidence that I have. I know the peace and the love that I have inside. And I'm, I'm moving through life that way. Now I have to get onto a frequency of attracting great men into my life. And I know that at this stage in life, it must it might be hard to find because great men are taken. They really are. Um, if I want a great guy in my life, I might have to be someone like 35 years old that, you know, is a bit more stable and not into some nasty kinks. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but it, this one was a funny one because he was so perfect. He is so perfect in so many ways, it seems. And then that happened. And it's like, mm, yeah, no. <laughs> Don't brush your teeth. <laughs> Yeah, I just, that's all I'll say. <laughs> and then my former fiance, my former fiance, love of my life to this point, I still feel that way about him. He was so beautiful. He was so beautiful and so tender and so sweet. Such a geeky voice and geeky face and just geeky stuff and just so, his mind was so dark. His mind was so taken. His mind was so consumed. And that breaks my heart because out of all the men that I've dated, all the men that I've seen since, he was my he was my sunshine, and he was be he would be the one that I would like to take home. <laughs> but it wasn't meant to be. So what are you gonna do? I'm single until the day I find my husband. He might be out there. He might not. I know he's out there, but. While I run into him, maybe not. Maybe I'll go the way of my sister, my soul sister, and never fulfill that part of me. I don't know. Time is ticking. <laughs>